So the idea was then developed over the next several years. Uh, one big problem is, well, what if the key isn't known at compile time? What do you do then? You can't compile it into an array lookup because you don't know what key is. And the solution that was adopted is, if self here is going to be, it's going to be an array object, the first element of the array is required to be a hash that maps the key names to the correct numbers of the slots. So you write self arrow key, right? So here's this thing. And an object in this form, an array with a hash as its first element, was called a pseudo hash because it can behave like a hash. And the way it does that, you've got this array reference. It contains this pseudo hash, which is a really, it's a really an array, but it's got this carrying around this hash here, naming the slots. It used to be that if you wrote arrow curly braces key, that's of course a runtime error because this means you want to do a hash lookup on key, and it's not a hash. So that was formerly a runtime error, but now. Perl will check, oh, hey, wait a minute, maybe this thing is a pseudo hash. I will go and look in the first element and see if there's a hash there. And if there is, I'll look up this key in that hash to find out the slot number, and that's what I'll use to access the array. So Perl would then, it would at one time detect, oh, wait a minute, this thing, which normally would throw a runtime error, will actually be executed as if you had written that. Okay, so array ref, access element zero, look up the key in the hash, and then use that as the index to look up the, uh, the actual value that you want out of the array. Now, it's worth pointing out at this point that when Perl has to do this, this is actually slower than just using a hash ref would have been, right? Because the hash lookup is exactly the same, and then on top of that, you've got two array lookups. Okay, but Typically, when you're accessing an object, the key is a hard-coded compile time string, and the hope was that in those cases, you get enough of a win that when this happens, which doesn't happen too often, it's enough to offset the loss there. But you can already see the storm clouds looming on the horizon. It's no longer a clear win. Now it's a, well, we kind of hope it's going to be a win-win. Any questions so far? Are we all good? Are we ready to? Uh, see the iceberg come over the horizon now? <laughs> right, so I mean, this is actually very complicated. There's a lot of extra code, all kinds of stuff had to be put into Perl. Many things had to change. It's a really fundamental change in the way that like, a lot of stuff in Perl, really basic stuff, worked. One particularly odious example of the kind of issue that suddenly obtruded is, well, people said, well, I've got this object, I think it's a hash, and this a pseudo hash then lets me treat the array as if it were a hash, but then when I call delete on the hash, it's not a hash, it's an array, and that delete doesn't work. So then delete and exists had to be extended to work on arrays. This Tom is making exactly the face that I was, I was walking around Pittsburgh an hour ago. So, all right, when this happens, I'm going to do this. But Tom did it for me. Because this is the point, this is the point in which I fell off the bus, where you know, you go along with these ideas for a while, all right, well, you know, proof of concept, we'll see how it works, and then at some point, you know, problems pop up, you decide you're gonna solve it. At some point, you have to say, okay, that's enough. No, just no. Uh, and this is the point at which I said no, just no. Uh, unfortunately, not everyone said that. Um, right, because the idea of delete on an array, I mean, delete deletes a key from a hash, and uh, these hashes can be implemented in all kinds of ways, right? It's a list of key value pairs, you delete a key, it deletes the key value pair from the hash, however that is implemented. An array can't delete the key. So I want to delete key number five from the array. What does that mean? You've got an array now that has indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9? No, you can't. You just can't. It doesn't make sense. It's a stupid idea. But there it is. And it went in, and I think it's still in there. Yeah, yeah as a fallout from this. So, yeah. Uh, all right. So after it was all done, and it finally in, in, it succeeded in some sense, the implementation was finished, all of the compromises that had to be made were made. And so it finally turned out that that new thing was 15% faster, 15% speed up for object member data access. So here's the old style where you say self arrow hearts takes 1.17 seconds. Here's the new style where self arrow hearts is actually trickery because self contains an array ref 
and it's been declared to be a packaged critter, and packaged critter has the right declaration in it, and self is carrying around this hash with it, and this only takes one second instead of 1.17 seconds. So maybe it was worth it because because it was uh, because it was actually faster. Um, and then uh, after about a year of this, somebody actually asked the right question. Instead of comparing the speed of the new and the old syntaxes in Pro 505, he compared the speed of the old syntax in 505 with the old, uh, the new syntax in 505 with the old syntax in 5004. Huh. And he discovered 5005, as a result of the pseudo hash crap infesting every part of Perl, was now 15% slower overall. Objects in 505 were 15% slower because of all the extra cases dealing with the pseudo hash junk. And if you got all those declarations in there and you used the pseudo hash stuff, you got all the declarations, everything went perfectly, you got a speed up that was just enough to get you back to where you had been before all this stuff was put in. So, but everything else that didn't do this was 15% slower. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> So it's a huge amount of work, toil, complexity in the language, all for negative value, nothing. So then there was a deprecation cycle, uh, and by 510, this was gone, except for some, some uh, lingering sores, like the fact that you can still call delete on an array. I don't know what it's supposed to do. I don't think anybody else does either. Uh, 10 years. Ten years of wasted effort. Well, uh, I need to do more research and find out how did this happen? Why wasn't there a limited proof of concept? Why wasn't the right benchmarking done at the right time? Whose dumb idea was this in the first place? Why didn't we, you know, back out sooner? What, what, a whole bunch of things had to go wrong here. I'm not sure why. I have a couple of theories. I'm going to philosophize a little bit. So one thing, one thing we should learn is the, Benchmarking is, is, it's not rocket science, but you've got to compare the right things. And I don't, it's years before somebody thought to actually compare the impact of pseudo hashes on Perl overall. I think it was Michael Schorn, but I maybe, maybe it would have been Dave Cross, I don't remember exactly. Somebody like suddenly had this like, this brainwave, and you know what, actually, we're not looking at the right thing here. Oh my God. Um, the other thing is something that has been, has been bugging me for years, which is, Programmers, maybe I'll just stop the talk right there. <laughs> um, programmers love to solve problems. Programmer gets an idea, like we'll, we'll do pseudo hashes, and then there's a problem with the idea. The programmer will say, that's okay, I can fix it. And how does the programmer fix it? By writing more code. And then there's another problem. So, oh, with the code, right? So then, oh, I can fix this, too. I can fix it. And then they keep fixing stuff until you're left with a smoking pile of rubble. And that's what happened here, I think. That, that there was problem after problem, and nobody ever stopped and said, all right, that's the end of it. No, we can fix that, too. My, my go-to example for this is called SPF. A number of years ago, how much time do I have, Eric? Do I have enough time to rant about SPF? It's seven minutes. Oh, my gosh, I can rant about SPF twice. <laughs> Someone got this great idea, which is we have this problem, which is people are sending spam and they forge the from address so you can't filter it. So what we're going to do is, well, they always send it from like some hack server or their own mail server, and they shouldn't be able to say they're sending mail from MJD at Clover.com. That's me. Well, we know that MJD at Clover.com only sends mail out of servers A, B, and C. And so we can have, when you get about to get mail from MJD at Clover.com, you can do a DNS lookup and say, oh, is this mail server that's trying to send me mail from MGD at Clover.com, is that actually a server that's allowed to send mail from MGD at Clover.com? And then if it's not actually coming from Clover.com's out -out, out out mail server, you can reject it. So, so this guy showed up at Usenix. I'm not going to name his name. You should have known better. <laughs> um, and with this idea, and he told me his idea, and I said to him, you know, that's not going to work. It's going to break mail forwarding. It used to be, okay, so Jeff there had an account, and then he, he's at, at some company, and then they arranged to have his mail forwarded from that company to his new employer. Well, now, if I send mail to his old address, 
and it gets forwarded, it's no longer coming from the right mail server, so the receiving mail server is going to reject it. Dude, you're breaking mail forwarding. It's a terrible idea. And he said to me, and I quote, why does everybody keep saying that? <laughs> <laughs> and so he could fix it. He figured out some way to fix it. It made it worse. And then it needed another fix. And now we have this huge infrastructure of stuff trying to validate email addresses. People actually use this. He got people to buy into this. And you know what? It doesn't work. It, it, it was a complete flop. We're still doing it. It's a huge waste of time and effort. And yet, why? Because when this guy was faced with a seemingly insurmountable problem, he decided he was going to fix it. And this is what happened here, too. Oh my gosh, what a disaster. This is the end of my complaint. Thank you for listening to me. Have a safe trip home. Any questions? Yeah, Eric? No? Uh, sorry. All right. Anybody? No. Thank you.